As I mentioned before, all of those papers are about anti-phishing training and education. So through all those presentations, we learn each author, uh, they did a pretty good job. So address the so-called internal validity. They have different types of phishing emails included in their study. So at least the two of the paper recruit a large sample. One is about you know, less than 200 participants. The other one is over 400. Uh, so those are pretty good. But we know the so-called external validity and ecological validity are also critical and important. So my first question here is, uh, so how each of you, um, you know, predict or comment on the so-called external validity of your work? In other words, how do you expect the finding you have in your paper can be generalized to other settings? For example, the first paper mainly investigate the issue in the enterprise setting, user phishing game. So how about, you know, transfer it to the education setting, such as the second author and the third author addressed here. And also the same thing. So for the third and the, uh, the second presenters, so the question is kind of the opposite manner. Okay, yeah. So maybe let's start from the first presenter. Uh, so that's a great perspective. So uh, as per our uh, study, as so far, we have been testing with enterprise employees. And uh, what we're doing currently, is like as I mentioned in the feature scope of our current study, we are expanding the demographics. So what we are doing is we are going outside the enterprise sector and to see. Uh, I'm, I'm okay, right? We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. So we are going outside the enterprise sector and we are testing uh, a set of Similar events like uh, so look, the emails that they do, I mean, the comment publish who have relatively less knowledge in phishing awareness of phishing, B, and like most people who don't know what phishing is. So, we are we're testing, uh, we are trying to test on that and to see like how just the uh, effects of the table change like, when they're completely there's a different demographic. So, that process is currently at uh, and we are testing that as of now. But uh, so far, what we believe is like, see, uh, I was uh, in, the, in the game, what uh, we focused was how to tell the users on what to uh, understand from what they are learning. So uh, it's not like there is a penalty for um, losing the game or anything like that. So it's like what they learned was going to be. So what we believe, they uh, proceed without understanding that they go their normal work day and so we we think that it will go go towards the other enterprise enterprise setting as well as outside. Okay, thank you. And next uh, let's see uh, Ben's opinion and comment. Yeah. So I think I already presented these four studies. So I hope that when I finish my dissertation I can give like a really good answer to also the external validity. I think I mentioned it at some point. So every study is similar in some ways we conducted and every study is different in other ways. So our instructor study was in an actual organization with them actually doing the instructor training received from us. So that was like the closest in actual training as you can get to a normal organization context. So they just received the material from us and then they did it as they would normally do it. And then we just tested the participants to see how this actually works out. Um, in the video study, we had more like students. And in the current study, we had participants from a panel. So that's one thing we try and hopefully in like one or two years when I'm completely done, then I can say with all these studies and all the retention aspects and internal aspects and external aspects, I changed uh, enough and have a methodology to say, okay, I can actually, as you already saw, like the, the time appears to be the same, no matter which material I give and no matter um, who I give the material. So if it's worker or students or panel people. Um, so I hope in the end I can not give a 100% answer, but give an answer like about a, different samples, different methods, different times to even have this external validity being as close as possible be answered. Great. 
and we look forward you will present more work in our symposium in the future then. <laughs> okay, so next, Vincent. Yeah, I'll start by adding something to, uh, to uh, Benjamin. Um, actually, um, we performed along to the study. I said that we were going to do this at FCC work. We already did this. And um, I'm not sure we also um, by accident chose the four month uh, limit, but um, we actually had very similar results as well. So um, it went down a little less. Uh, the mean difference went over there, but um, it was still significantly higher than the, than the previous. So uh, probably a high external validity there. Um, so uh, basically, um, I had uh, or presented quite a lot of uh, different research results uh, in my talk. Um, I will start with the many the uh, the easiest one. I think the certain similarity is something that um, probably has a high external validity. So uh, I would recommend that uh, people uh, who actually are going to perform studies in the future uh, include something like a familiarity uh, test and uh, correct for that. Um, so make it um, clear in the beginning that they're going to only use uh, the non services. Um, the game mechanics are somewhat more different because um, obviously we can not just apply this to anti-phishing games uh, in general, but also to like any kind of serious game where binary decision uh, might be present. And I think that's uh, much more complicated to uh, generalize. So this should be seen as a first like indicator that uh, game mechanics might not make such a difference and the content is more important, but certainly not um, a definite answer. Yeah, so I agree with you. In fact, throughout the presentation today, we saw a lot of consistency across those three studies, right? So all of you care about, you know, how long this uh, intervention uh, is effective. And also, I think one thing reviewed is throughout at least the two paper here is the feedback matters. And all of you are interested in investigating the effects of the feedback. Okay, so in fact, I have tons of questions in my mind, but due to the, the panel and the, uh, the following Q&A, so I will move to the next question. So I think this uh, is related to so-called uh, ecological validity. So all of you tested in a kind of experimental setting, but we really care about people's real world security behavior. So uh, based on my understanding, I think you haven't investigated what they behave in the field. So how do you think this results you obtain in the experimental setting can be generalized in the wild? Maybe let's take the backward order. Start from, no, Winston just, you know, apply. Maybe start from Ben then <laughs> in the it's middle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So I think the actual behavior change is something that is really difficult. Um, so in our group, we are in the opinion that actually testing them with real emails is not a good idea for various reasons. We think still there needs to be a separation from the actual daily work to the testing. Um, we think this needs to be some kind of a, a more latent variable approach in testing for different stuff, but not actually sending them phishing emails because people already receive a lot of emails and a lot of phishing emails. Um, and it's also something about trust with the company. So we think they're, as, I mean, I'm from psychology, so the, uh, these psychology and human factors are uh, what I find really difficult. So for our um, approach in the company paper with the instructor training was that we gave them the material they tested themselves um, and we also communicated with them over 12 months so i only presented six months of the results but in actual we did the study for 12 months and we communicated with them if they had like actual problems so if someone fall for fish in this time, like someone that already participated in the training and stuff like this, I think that would be a approach like testing with stuff like we do and then have like different other measures. Like are people actually communicating more of phishing attacks they recognize just like real attacks. So you collect the data from reporting and stuff like this or other measures that are more than driving you towards this final goal that you think, okay, your people actually behave more secure. Yeah, maybe next, uh, uh, Goku. Yeah. 
So uh, considering this, uh, what we had as a limitation was, we, so since it's an enterprise, it, we were, it was really difficult for us to actually test like, what the users are responding to. Where, so this is also a matter of privacy, right? So how can we intervene in like, such a real life scenario? But uh, in order to counter that, what we did was uh, we made the questions we keep the game as close to the real life emails as possible. So uh, this is uh, also what you what can say. Like, this is like uh, we are telling the users see, these are the emails that you normally receive. But even in these emails, there are hidden aspects that you have to, or you, you must identify. So it's not uh, like we are directly testing what they are. Basically, with the real life image. But so, considering this factor, I think this is as of now, it's difficult to test this. And uh, this is what I have to say. Uh, Vincent's opinion here. Yes, yeah, so um, basically, uh, we talk about this uh, in the context of uh, like um, and knowledge uh, on the one hand about. Um, phishing websites and URLs in particular, and awareness on the other hand, uh, which is like the uh, situation of awareness maybe to apply that knowledge. And um, we obviously did not uh, test this at all. And I am 100% certain that uh, in the wild and in, in real life setting, uh, people are not going to uh, perform as well as um, as on the tests, since I mean, it's obviously a, a lab study. Um, what I uh, so one of uh, one of our opinions is that personalization um, also might lead to um, like an immersive effect, uh, some similar to what uh, Robert said in the as the day uh, created uh, the email interface, similarly to um, to the actual organization. Um, but um, yeah, uh, really, it's it's a different question, and uh, in the in the current form, the games are really not not meant to do this. Also, uh, I agree with Benjamin that it's really hard to measure this. Uh, we would have to like perform a simulated phishing attacks, something like that. Uh, it's kind of complicated to get consent for this and, and so on. Uh, so that's the reason why we did not uh, not test it in this, in this study. Yeah. Uh, so I totally agree with your opinion here. So in fact, collecting the data in the real world in the field setting is pretty kind of difficult. But I think one thing we can consider is so nowadays, the interdisciplinary research has been highly recommended. In fact, we are a small community here, but we can collaborate with you know, scientists and the researchers. They can have the capability to collect a lot of data in the wild or maybe investigate this issue in the wild. We can work together to address this issue. OK, so I have the last question for this panel discussion that is related to the wild. We know. Fishing is a cat and mouse game, right? So it keeps evolving. Uh, we have those pretty simple techniques initially, and nowadays we have more sophisticated techniques. For example, in the Eucynix uh, Symposium, I think 2021, there are at least two papers uh, presented there. The first is about cloaking fishing, which means the adversary, they can leverage the technique to understand whether the response or in the actions is from a bot or real person and leverage that to attack you know, the human users. And we know the, I think the third uh, presentation here today is about the URL because the game is specific for the URL because we, are, we know URL is the most reliable cue to identify whether this phishing web page is malicious or legitimate. But we know there are new techniques there as well. For example, the IDN technique, right? So they can use the letters that looks pretty similar, but they are somewhat different. For example, the, the Greek letter A looks identical to the ethical letter A, but in fact, they're different. Therefore, they represent two different domain names. So my last panel kind of leading question here is, given we have so many new fishing techniques evolved in the wild, how do you envision or maybe incorporate those kind of things into the anti-fishing training and education in your work? Yeah, anyone, you, you have the answer, so you can, you know, speak here. Yeah, so, uh, see, that's very separate. The different types of URL-based fishing attacks that would happen. So, for example, it's a short URL. Short URLs are really difficult for people to identify, whether it's like a link or a 
So for what uh, could be done in such scenarios, like actually we have done it in our earlier where a bird's work species, that's also an anti-fishing awareness, which is basically for the small ignorance. So we train the users on how to expand the short URLs without actually seeking those URLs. Mm -hmm. So uh, such forms of uh, training for specific for particular URLs can be that at um, I think in the future also like uh, with newer forms of phishing links appearing. So we have to first identify the counter pressures that that we can and then try to come up with simpler game mechanics or simpler trading methods that would help users understand it in an easy way. Um, so I think I want to comment first on the uh, website cloaking. Um, I'm not sure if we are talking about the same uh, paper. Um, but um, if I remember correctly, it's um, this is more of a I think it's more of a problem for uh, us analysts and researchers and less for the users. So it's basically um, the problem is that um, the uh, reactive block lists get updated later because uh, when researchers are trying to check is this reported website actually a fish, um, they do not see the phishing website. So I think that's um, that's kind of a different issue. Really, really interesting, obviously, um, but not uh, that closely related to user education in itself. Um, as for uh, yeah the um, the other problems you mentioned, um, I generally think that uh, some kind of uh, education, even if we see only small improvements, uh, that's obviously bet better than uh, giving up and saying this is impossible. Uh, we won't do anything. Um, but I agree that there are lots of um, yeah ingenious new techniques. Um, I've also um, come to see that uh, these browser browser or picture and picture attacks seem to be on the rise again. Um, which is obviously, I mean, uh, if you look at the URL bar uh, in the wrong place, then uh, the best education but that doesn't help you. And um, yeah, I am IDN um, phishing, of course, also a problem. Um, though I think that uh, many browsers uh, are trying to solve this from a technical perspective. So uh, yeah, it's it's a really complicated uh, cat and mouse game, um, as you said. Um, and I think uh, the future will, at least the near future, um, we will have to see uh, that. Um, the technical advantage, uh, advances go hand in hand with the uh, educational ones until we find a perfect solution uh, that does not depend on the users at all. Yeah, regarding the, the clock phishing, I think there are some recent report about leverage of that to deceive humans. So yeah, you may check some of the recent kind of articles online. Yeah. So Ben, uh, any comments or opinions? Yeah, I, I have to agree with both of you. So I think there are like a lot of techniques and I also already mentioned at the end of the talk that like for our awareness training, we find that some techniques are really difficult to train users in. So our general approach, at least my approach also in my dissertation is like two-sided, like one side is the awareness and I think it, it needs to be done. So in the end, user needs to decide but sometimes they just need to have more support. So my second aspect is like, uh, we developed a tool that you can use in Thunderbird email clients and uh, web, in web mailing. So this helps you with some attacks like the short URLs or redirects, stuff like this or mismatches because our tool um, also for the aspects I showed you with like the middle deviations in the domain, which people have like reading problems because humans are not reading normally character by character, they read the whole word. So our best example always is if you change the C and the R in Microsoft, like even if I train people like hammer it in, like we always get like 80% wrong answers because it's really difficult to take even after it like in processing. So it's not about retention. So, and we then have like measures to specifically target this really difficult things that are either difficult or even impossible for users, because we think that something, some of the attacks are just not possible for them to, to detect. So something needs to be technically solved by supporting in some ways and some needs to have at least the awareness. So that's, I think, our general idea about this. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good point. So uh, in fact, there are other aspects we can consider to somehow complementary to the aspects we cannot address in the education or the training setting. Okay. So uh, with that, so I will move to our Q&A session. Uh, I think 
Uh, I will ask one specific question for each of the presenter here. So the first question is about uh, Goko's presentation. So uh, one of the attendee asked, were the emails used in the game modeled after realistic emails sent to employees in the company? Yeah, so speaking about the emails that were used in the game, majority of them the simple the actual emails that employees got used during their normal work. And as a few of the emails at some point, uh, social engineering, uh, social networking uh, sites, and Amazon, and shopping sites, etc., that the users are more likely to use in their daily life. So uh, basically, yeah, almost all the emails were modeled after real life emails. And just a few text or uh, a few URLs were modified so that they are not exactly the emails that they received. Okay, good. Uh, thanks for Galco for the answer. And next, let's move to second paper here. So Ben, one of the at attendees asked, so, when, uh, so what would you recommend happen after six months? So given you have this very concrete timeline kind of defined in your study, and uh, another air uh, awareness campaign uh, to bring the awareness levels up, so those kind of two sub questions from this participant here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a good question. Um, as I said in the um, other paper and about the instructor-based training, we did exactly this. So we had instructor-based training. Then we tested for six months to see, as we found that after six months it was not significant anymore. At this point, we already had groups in the the bag to to train them with different ways so we tested like which i showed you we tested text we tested our video we tested uh, some interactive emails so we tested four different ways to see how this reminder measure then helps them and we found that the video the interactive email um and uh, the the overall long text helped people even go over 12 months so they were still significantly better than before after 12 months Still, there was some decline. Um, I think in general, I would not advise to use the same. We actually didn't test this because for like, we had this real environment and the company does, didn't want to have a instructor-based training, which takes like three to four hours, everyone participating every six months, because at least in Germany, due to law, they have to do something like this only after 12 months. So that's the reason why we tested shorter materials. And I think, even from my point, I would do different things changing in between so people are not just um, entering the room and thinking oh, the same again. So tr we try to have the same content in different ways so people can still learn and people have some something new, but still it's always the same content. So people are not lacking anything when they change between the measures. Okay, uh, good. Thanks, Ben. And uh, next, let's move to the last question here. So that's for Winston. So uh, in fact, in the game design, so the user experience for the game is a little bit complex. So the uh, attendee ask was minimizing the explanation, a consideration there? Yes, yeah, so um, that is obviously a very good point. And for our prototypes, we really focused on, I mean, these are serious games, so um, it's kind of a gamified learning. Um, we kind of wanted to make a, a lecture a little more accessible or interesting through um, uh, through um, the game experience. Um, I know that there is uh, there has been some very uh, interesting research on that by a, by a colleague of mine, Clemens Kuda. Um, and I agree with his uh, kind of um, thesis that we are probably going to need better game designers for that. So uh, we are, at least I am um, a night security person. Um, I'm not a game designer. I have no experience in uh, in game design. Uh, my colleague, uh, Reni Röpke, has uh, more experience than I do, but he's also not a professional game designer. And um, I think um, they are... Uh, yeah, we, we need uh, more creativity and more creative uh, solutions to uh, to tackle that problem and uh, to make the games actually like really interesting to play and engaging. That was simply not in scope for, for our prototypes. That would have taken uh, much for part much effort, I, I think, I'm afraid. Sure. I think since it's a game, uh, question about the game, it also applied to the first presentation. So, Goko, I don't know whether you have any comments or uh, response to this question. 
Yeah, so what our okay case was, was similar to the email interface. So, yeah, actually, uh, the initial gate that we designed was more of a fun page gate. And this time, we thought, like, okay, that was a fun based game. So, let's make it more user and I see, like, more related to what the actual user is going to see in their real life. So, that's why we made a simulated email gate this time. So, yeah, this is always, uh, it, there's a trade-off between the fun element and the learning factor of many types of CSP. And uh, making a balance between the both is always like, like it's, it's still at that point, or with subject. Okay, thank you all, and thank you all the uh, attendees here. <laughs>